The Southern African Regional Body, FADC, has called for unity government in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Following the disputed presidential election, all political leaders should agree a negotiated settlement, it said. Opposition candidate Felix Chisekade was declared a winner, but another opponent of the current administration, Martin Fialu, insists he won. He alleges Mr. Chisekade made a deal with outgoing President Joseph Kabila. Mr. Kabila has been in office for 18 years and the result, if confirmed, would create the first orderly transfer of power since independence from Belgium in 1960. The declaration of Mr. Shinsekedi as winner has also been disputed by the influential Catholic Church, which says it deployed 40 000 election monitors across the country. On Saturday, Mr. Sayuru filed an appeal in the Constitutional Court, demanding a manual recount of votes cast in the 30 December election. This call was supported by said in its statement, issued by then BN President Edgar Lenglu, who is the body's current chairman. He and other regional leaders felt the best way forward was a negotiated political settlement and a government of national unity, Mr. Langu said. He cited the example of similar deals in Zimbabwe and Kenya. South Africa's foreign minister, Linda Sisulu, also said a unity government could prove to be an acceptable compromise. For a troubled country in desperate need of peace, the legal process in the drive Congo should not be preempted, and outsiders should not attempt to force a settlement. She added, several Western governments have expressed surprise and concern at the declared results. SADC's intervention will be welcomed by some as a wise proposal to avoid further bloodshed, but others will see it as another weak and dangerous compromise that undermines African democracy and emboldens autocrats. The BBC's Andrew Harding in Johannesburg says, on Saturday, Mr. Sayulu repeated that the result did not reflect the truth of the ballot boxes. He told BBC Africa editor Fogo King, I will do whatever is possible for me to do to get the truth, because the Congolese won't change. According to the National Electoral Commission, Senate, Mr. Shisekade received 38.5% of the vote. The full results were, turnout was reported to be 48%. The commission also said the pro kabila coalition had won a majority of parliamentary seats. Judges have seven days to deliberate. Constitutional expert Jorgen Jolie told the BBC there were three possible outcomes. The court could confirm Mr. Shisekedi's victory, order a recount, or cancel the results altogether and count fresh elections. The Constitutional Court has never overturned results before, and some think most of its judges are close to the ruling party. If Mr. Shisekedi were confirmed as the winner, he would be expected to be inaugurated within 10 days. Why drive Congo matters? A poacher has been ordered to watch the Disney film Bambi repeatedly after he was convicted of illegally killing. Hundreds of deer. Missouri hunter David Barry, Jr. must view the film at least once a month during his year-long sentence. He was arrested in August along with two family members for killing the deer, taking their heads and leaving their bodies to rot. Prosecutors said it is reportedly one of the biggest poaching cases in Missouri history. On top of the jail sentence for the illegal deer hunting, Judge Robert George ordered Barry J. R. 2, 
filled the Walt Disney Movie Bambi, with the first viewing being on or before December 24, 2018, and at least one such viewing each month thereafter. During his spell in prison, the 1942 cartoon about woodland creatures shows a hunter kill the mother of eponymous dear character Bambi, a months-long investigation spanning several states, led to the arrest of Barry J. R., his father David Barry, Sr., and his brother Kyle Barry, according to local newspaper, the Springfield News Leader. While the total number of deer taken illegally is unknown, Lawrence County's conservation agent Andy Barnes said it could be several hundred. Barry J. R. received a year-long sentence in Lawrence County Prison after pleading guilt to illegally taking wildlife. He has also been sentenced to a one to zero day term in Barton County Prison for a firearms probation violation, and both he and his father had their hunting privileges revoked for life by the Missouri Conservation Commission, a popular tourist attraction has become the latest Chinese company to show solidarity with Huawei's chief finance officer, Meng Wanzhou, who was arrested in Canada on 1 December. Shannon Mountain Scenic Park in Eastern Han and Province said it would waive the $9.40.65 yuan ticket fee for anyone carrying a Huawei phone. Ms. Meng, who was given bail in Canada, Faces extradition to the United States on charges of breaking Iran sanctions. Her case has upped tensions with China. U.S. Huawei phones should grant photos on the mountain, a notice on the Shannon Park's social media account said. We wish friends around the world who support Huawei success in bliss. The offer would last until 29 December. The South China Morning Post reported, but it was met with some criticism among Chinese social media users who claimed it was discriminatory. Who are we phone owners are being offered other enticements too. They can get a 20% discount at a bar in Beijing. Seen in Beijing, bring a who are we phone and get 20% off. Similar to this story. We covered yesterday https t twitter com love end of twitter post by at Shinji. at least one firm has threatened to penalize anyone buying Apple products. A few days ago, Manpada Shenzhen, based led in the display manufacturer offered Subsidies to any employees buying Huawei phones. It also pledged to fine anyone who bought an Apple iPhone. United States prosecutors alleged it is main. 四十六 Use the Huawei subsidiary called Skycom to evade sanctions on Iran between 2009 and 2014. They also allege she publicly misrepresented Skycom as being a separate company from Huawei, and that she deceived banks about the true relationship between the two companies. Ms. Meng, who is the daughter of Huawei's founder, has denied any wrongdoing and said she will contest the allegations. Life of Huawei's high-flying heiress. The United States has been investigating the Chinese telecoms giant, the world's second-largest smartphone maker, since 2016, believing that it used Skycom to bring the United States manufacturing equipment and millions of dollars in transactions to Iran in violation of sanctions. Ms. Meng's detention. Comes amid an increasingly acrimonious trade dispute between Washington and Beijing. China is angry at her detention, saying she has not violated any laws. 
Beijing has threatened severe consequences unless Canada releases the executive. Since her arrest, two Canadians, a former diplomat and a businessman, have been detained in China on suspicion of harming national security. United States President Donald Trump said last week that he might intervene in the United States Justice Department's case against Ms. Men if it would serve national security interests or help achieve a trade deal with China. If I think it's good for what will be certainly the largest trade deal ever made, which is a very important thing. What's good for national security? I would certainly intervene if I thought it was necessary, he told the Reuters news agency. Canada reacted by urging Mr. Trump not to politicize the situation. Our extradition partners should not seek to politicize the extradition process or use it for ends other than the pursuit of justice. Foreign Minister Christie Freeland said, "The United States military says it has killed 62 fighters from the Islamist group Al-Shabaab in six air strikes in Somalia. A four air strikes on Saturday killed 32 militants, and a further two on Sunday killed 28." It said in a statement.